Good evening. This is CTV News for Monday, July 31st. I'm Janine Samuels. And I'm Patricia Ballone. Glad to have you with us tonight. Well, it now marks one year since a devastating flash flood killed two people and destroyed much of a historic Maryland town. While most businesses in Ellicott City have since reopened, some remain closed forever. We went back to the site today to report on the town's rebirth. An eclectic mix of art galleries, antique shops, and restaurants in Ellicott City are making a comeback after a sudden flood this time last year wiped out much of the historic town's infrastructure. One year ago today, this was as far as the public was allowed to venture into Ellicott City. As you can see behind me, everything is up and running now, but much of the infrastructure at that time was deemed too unsafe to venture into. The city sits on a giant slope. When the rains came barreling in, all of the water drained downhill. These were the businesses that were hit the worst. Today, much of the area has recovered and many businesses have reopened their doors. There was a lot of water damage throughout the basement. It was actually up to the ceiling. Um, the bar was affected. We had to replace the bar, the whole center uh, area, some of the tables, the kitchen, almost everything was replaced. And there was seven feet of water inside my building and 15 feet below my building. Berkowitz owns the building where his business is located. On that fateful day last year, tenants that live upstairs were trapped. Once the water receded, we came in and met our tenants who were trapped on the second floor rear apartment. And uh, we had them break down the door to the laundry room between the two apartments and they came out the front door. Max Crownover and his wife have reopened their business, Horse Spirit Arts Gallery. My wife was here the night of the flood, um, and she um, watched as the, the waters rose. She was actually downstairs until the water was up to her chest, trying to protect things and save things. Um, we lost $55,000 worth of art on the first floor, plus all of our infrastructure. But not all businesses have been so lucky. Some completely shut down. Others, such as Portales, are still rebuilding and promise to return. Last August, we interviewed the owner of Out of Our Past Antiques. Steve Collins said the business had no flood insurance, so their store was a total loss. A car apparently floating down the river floated into, we're on kind of a corner, floated into the front of the shop, broke out the window. A gusher started from inside and just carried all our stuff out. Howard County has spent nearly $11 million to repair the town's infrastructure. The nonprofit Ellicott City Partnership set up a website for donations and collected nearly $2 million to help dozens of shop owners. Officials say to date, 90% of businesses have reopened and more than 70% of households have returned. Now, last week, Howard County Executive Alan Kittleman announced that another $18 million in long-term work upstream on the Patapsco River. Officials say they hope to control the flow of water to reduce the likelihood of another damaging flood in the historic town. Wow, so a lot of good stories there. So many um, stores have reopened, but you mentioned that a restaurant that you frequented the most still is shuttered. Yes, yes, the uh, rumor mill, which was voted Maryland's, one of Maryland's top restaurants, a gourmet, excellent restaurant, it has yet to reopen. So, uh, you know, hopefully one day it will. Yeah, mm -hmm. for our tummies, right? Right, <laughs> all right, thanks. Well, a pool of mosquitoes has tested positive for the West Nile virus in New Carrollton. The health department says it's the first such case for this year. As a result, spraying will get underway in a number of neighborhoods, including Lanham Woods, Oakwood Knolls, and Wildcroft to kill off those mosquitoes. In addition, officials suggest residents take precautions to prevent being bitten. For example, use insect repellent, install window and door screens, and remove or empty containers with water. We asked a number of residents if if they're seeing mosquitoes in the area. Yes, when you see it outside. But I don't know which type of mosquitoes. What do you generally do to protect yourself against mosquitoes? Um, I usually spray. I spray when I see mosquitoes. When I see flies, I spray around. That's what I do. I think that uh, county government should be involved in helping us to fight um, against uh, the mosquito problem. 
we have had a lot more mosquitoes because it's been a lot wetter this year. And uh, I typically drop tablets into standing water, uh, but even that wasn't sufficient for me this year. Approximately 20% of people infected with the West Nile virus will develop symptoms. They include a fever, which is typically accompanied by head and body aches and can last days or even weeks. Some people can also develop a more severe form of the disease if bitten by a mosquito carrying the West Nile virus. The Prince George's County State's attorney publicly declares she is seeking another leadership position, standing in front of her parents' home after being introduced by her father. Angela also Brooks announced her candidacy for county executive today. This is the place where I grew up, and it's a place that I still call home. It is the place where I learned the values of family, community, and service. So with my family by my side, as they have always been, I pick this time and this place to announce my campaign to be your next Yay! county <laughs> All of the values that I learned right here in Prince George's County are the reason I'm running for county executive, and it's what I'll focus on if elected. I know Prince George's. I have worked with you. I have learned with you, I have worshiped with you, and I have even grieved with you. And I believe that all of us want the same thing for our families. A safe community, a quality education for our children, security and stability for our aging relatives, and good paying jobs for, eager, for an eager workforce who are looking for a hand up, not a hand out. Also, Brooks will compete in next year's Democratic primary against state Senator Anthony Muse. 